All right, y'all, welcome back to White Mountain's Livestock. Man, it has been a while, but we are back and we are rolling. In this episode, we're going to go over our ranch manager software. We're going to show you how to add your animals into it and how to implement this thing in your herd so you can make better decisions. Stay tuned, because it's coming up. Hey y'all, welcome back to White Mountain's Livestock. Now, like we said in the intro, in this episode we're going to go through the cattle module of our ranch manager software. Um, this is actually really cool. doesn't matter if you're running 5 head or 5,000 head. Um, this thing can handle it. It can help you track your operation and make better decisions. Um, so, let's just jump right into it. So I've created a demo project, which is actually super simple to do. Uh, you can go up to File, New. If you've already installed the software put in your project's name and done deal hit okay create your project loads it up now to change modules what modules are in right here go to add remove modules you click the modules you want you hit okay and it will tell you to restart the software for the new modules to take effect now when you in, when you uh, start a module um, You'll get two windows. You'll have a herd and your breeds. Okay? Enter your breeds in here. Gives you all your information. Your basic stuff. But let's just get started right in to the, to the stuff everybody probably wants to know. And that's how do you start using Ranch Manager? How do you start putting your animals into the software? So we're going to go ahead and do the cattle herd. Okay, so there's basically three primary ways to create animal records. One, you can buy an animal by using the new or the buy new animal action. And this does allow you to create the animal at the same time as attaching a purchase animal event to the animal. Okay, you can birth the animal from an existing female, uh, which will pull some information from the dam and the sire if it's known and in the system. Or you can enter the animal from scratch using the animal editor view. Now, typically you'll use that view when you just want to enter your current set of animals and not record who you purchased them from. Or you don't have, uh, you know, the dam entered yet. Maybe you don't plan to because you're just starting out. Now, in the end, all three of those messages or methods do finish in the animal editor view so that you can add any additional information to the animal that may uh, not have been offered in whatever method you decided to use to go ahead and enter the base record. So there's a good workflow to remember when you're, when you're trying to figure out how you want to enter your animals. Okay, so the first one is ask yourself, did I buy the animal? If the answer is yes, then use the new buy animals, the buy new animal section, okay? If you did not, and you have created the dam, then use the birth animal action. Now remember, the dam is your surrogate mother. Okay, if you did not buy the animal and you do not have the dam in the system, then you start with the animal editor. It's that simple. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and go through all three of them, but let's just start with the most flexible one, and that's the animal editor. So to access it, you can click directly on cattle herd in this case and this is your animal editor view now it looks pretty complicated it actually is not as bad as it looks okay so now it's composed this thing is composed of multiple sub views um, which are represented by tabs at the top of the panel which you can see up here now when you open the editor for the first time you'll be viewing the main tab now, this is where you're going to enter all of your basic information in order to create an animal. The display name, gender, and the breed are required to save a record. Now, you'll also need to provide like the birth date if the animal is marked as raised, which it is down here. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> let's just go ahead and get started with creating our first animal. Now, some of these dates are going to be older because we're going through it. Uh, you know, it's just, <clears throat> they're going to be older just so the numbers and everything work out well, right, okay? So anyway, um, 
we're gonna go ahead and enter that we're gonna start with the first animal so let's go ahead and put Betsy for the display name okay now the display name is used throughout the software when it's when referring to this specific animal now the value doesn't have to be the official name of the animal animal but it should represent the animal the same way you would so for instance let's say Betsy's registered name is Betsy 47 L chances are you're just gonna call her Betsy so in her name you'll put in Betsy 47 L that's where you're gonna put in her official name okay and it can be the same as the display name it, it's perfectly fine it's however you need to track okay it's a nice thing about this there's no there's very few things that make you do something a specific way okay now then you can enter any other information you have plastic tags metal tags brisket tags tattoos uh, registration numbers if they're available or if if she is registered tracking numbers um, you know so now in the registration number actually the tattoo let's just go ahead and put in l71 t7n just so we've got something in there and for the registration number let's go ahead and put in 743 8348 and we'll go ahead and put that in as her registration number now these are optional fields you do not have to put anything in them however if you do have this information you can search by that later on and we'll go through and we'll show you exactly how to do that probably in a later video now we do need to enter a value for the gender so let's just go ahead and leave it as a cow okay now for the sire of the dam fields we'll go ahead and leave those blank for now and we'll do the same thing for the surrogate dam now for the breed we're going to type angus now if you click on the little rolodex you see there's nothing here it just says unknown well that's because there's no breeds added into the cattle breed uh, part of the module and that's fine you could actually input you can add them directly through the interface so we'll put angus just like that and for horns we'll go ahead and leave it pulled now for birth date let's go ahead and use march 12th of 2006 yes i know she's old probably already been sent to freezer camp um but <laughs> Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just use this just 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 cuz um, all right so now you can enter like I did okay where you can hit 12 tab March tab and then tab again in another year you can put in the date then you can select a drop down to select your month or you can go this way and just do it and select a day in the calendar however you decide to do it is up to you now for birth weight if you have it you can add it if you don't not the end of the world now because we do have the birth date we will go ahead and leave raised checked now let's go ahead and save her which you can do coming all the way to the bottom right corner you have this little bar little uh, maroon bar with what looks like a uh, home plate for baseball um, and if you mouse over it it gives you the tooltip save animal so let's go ahead and save it now here's what's cool so the breed angus does not yet exist in the system do you wish to add the breed now well yes we do she is angus we are adding her so yes now one thing to remember when adding breeds this way and you can go in and edit later it uses your default gestation um uh, your default gestation period or length so whatever the system has in by default is what's going to be used to calculate breedings calving all that okay now you can go into the breeds uh, after this and you can change those dates and that's fine um, and everything will adjust for that but 
Now, so now you may have noticed there is a bunch of extra tabs at the top now. Now these are active record tabs and they appear once you've successfully created the base animal record. So we'll take a another look at them later, okay? But for now, let's go ahead and continue Betsy and provide some data for the sire and the dam fields. Now you may have noticed that you can't simply type a name into these fields, okay? So you cannot just type a name into these fields. It doesn't allow it, okay? So, and this is because an animal requires more than just a display name to be added into the system. So, let's start by adding a sire for Betsy. So, we can click on the little blank sheet of paper here next to the sire field. And this pops up the quick add animal dialog. <clears throat> Now, in this interface, it allows you to quickly uh, fill in the minimal values for an animal, plus a few of the common extras, okay? Now, the in the display name, we're going to call him Texas T, okay? In the owner field, let me get down to it here, use tab just because I can, we're going to go ahead and say... Hmm. Let's enter unknown. Okay. Now, the gender field is disabled and filled with the value of bull. Okay. You can't select any more here. Why is this? Well, this is Betsy's sire. So, obviously, he has to be a bull. Okay. So, and let's see. The breed was pulled from the calf. So in this case, it was pulled from Betsy's record of Angus. So that's awesome. Okay. Now we can leave the birth date value blank because we didn't raise the animal. And it's because of this reason that we might not know when the animal was born. Now, we do recommend that you put in all the information that you have available so that you can keep the most accurate records possible. At the end of the day, this software is here to help you make better decisions with your herds. Now, and you can always go in and add information later if you get if you get it later on, that's fine. But for now, this is what we're going to add. And we're going to say that Texas T is pulled. So we'll click OK. And now, if you look right here in the Sire tab, you see right off the bat, Texas T is added in as the sire, which is great. Now, note that we're taken back to the base animal view for the child, okay? And the sire is filled in as Texas T with a birth date value of not applicable because we don't know it, okay? Now, an animal and ranch manager is uniquely identified by the combination of a display day now, an animal and ranch manager is uniquely identified by a combination of its display name and its birth date. Now, you can have two animals with the same display name, but you cannot have two animals with the same display name born in the same year. Now, usually this isn't a problem, because if you do have two animals with the same name, you will probably do something to distinguish between those two. So, simply include that distinguishing factor in the animal's display name values, such as a color, patches, or any kind of markings, or anything like that. Now, for the dam, we could go ahead and be boring and use the same little blank paper button to the right of the field to quick add the dam. But, that's no fun. So, let's use the pedigree editor instead. So, the pedigree editor will allow you to select and quick add in animals directly into the pedigree chart which if you're filling out generations uh, or multiple generations, you might find it useful. Now to access this view, save her. Okay, now to access the view. So now to check out the pedigree tab, it's simple to get to because we wanna see Betsy's pedigree. Okay, so we're gonna come right up here to the action tabs at the top and we're gonna click on pedigree and welcome to the pedigree chart. 
Now, you, you can see that Texas tea is already in there. And we want to be able to add the dam from this page. Now, I am going to go ahead and back this down. Otherwise, it gets a little crazy. So we're going to change how many generations we're, we want to see. And, I mean, you can roll this thing out. You can go six generations on your herd if you so choose. Now, in this case, we're not going to go that route. We're going to go to one just because I don't want a massive screen full of stuff. Actually, you'll just do two. Okay. So <laughs> now to be able to edit in this view, you simply come up and you click on edit pedigree. And now this gives you two little icons here. Okay. So the blank sheet of paper is to create a new animal. So we'll click on that. And again, the quick add animal view pops up. So let's enter the following information. Okay. If you're following along, great. If not, well, remember <laughs> so we're going to call her samantha xl okay and we're going to go ahead and go ahead and give her a birth date of uh let's say june 18th of let's do 2003 okay we're going to leave her pulled all right and for the owner we're going to put in unknown okay because we don't know. So, from here, we'll go ahead and click on OK. And Samantha XL is now added in. Now, now that she's added in, notice the same pair of buttons are added in for the grandparents. This is so you can continue to add your generations back and back and back okay this continues from that so um, and they are available for both the sire and the dam so that's kind of cool now you might wonder what the other button is in the group right here that you kind of see here which is fine <laughs> uh, so I'll go ahead and show you now the the this button it's used when you know that the animal that should be in that position is already in the software and you want to go ahead and just select it so let's go ahead and try it now we're going to click on this little blue button okay and for our sire we're going to select texas t now who knew betsy was inbred now now here's something that a lot of people uh, would r really like okay a lot of our existing customers love this feature um, so we will go ahead and take it out of edit view and you can see she is absolutely inbred so if you come up here and you click on the detect inbreeding you see how Texas T pops up in red and it has a little X subscript to the left of the name now this is simply to indicate an instance of inbreeding in Betsy's pedigree. Now, you will find this to be a handy tool. In some cases, such as line breeding, the inbreeding is to be expected. In others, you might want to avoid it. So, when you're doing breeding planning, this really comes in handy. And don't worry about breeding planning. We'll get to that in a later video. Now, since we know Betsy is not inbred, let's go ahead and reverse that last step. So, to do that, we simply click on edit pedigree. We click on the blue box. We go back to unknown and we click OK. And from there, it's gone. Now, let's go ahead and go back to the main tab. Okay. So we come up here to the action tabs and we click on main. It takes us back to the animal editor view. Now, in the bottom right corner, if you come down here to the little white sheet of paper, this will allow you to add in a new animal. So, when I click on this, now look at the bottom of the screen. You see down here how it says new animal. Now, this is important. 
Whenever you're going to add a new animal into the system, make sure you click that button after you save the animal you're working on. If you just go in after you save that animal and you start typing in on the display name field and that stuff, when you save it, it will overwrite that animal. Okay? If you need to make an edit, that's fine. But remember to always hit the new animal button before you enter a new animal. Now, so let's go ahead and go to the herd dams view. Okay, we want to see all of our females that we have in our herd. So if we click on that, we get to Betsy. Okay, now, if we scroll back, let's go ahead and go back to 2006. Oh, I'm sorry, 2007. Now, notice Betsy is in blue. Okay. Now, oh, there we go. Now she's in green. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain what this is and why the color changes, okay, and what those colors mean. So, in this view, okay, we're looking at 2008, and Betsy is two years old. Now, the herd views and ranch manager use color coding to provide a rough age indicator for that for each animal. Now, animals listed in blue are yearlings or younger. Green are two-year-olds, and black is anything older than that. Now, remember, she's green here because we're looking at 2008. And if you remember, Betsy was born in 2006. Now, if we go straight to the current year, I'm not even going to click on that that many times. And you can type into the working year and press enter. And it will take you back to the current year. Now, let's go ahead and add another animal. And let's assume that we purchased a new cow from another breeder. So instead of going straight to the animal editor view, which we could do, so let's go ahead and enter another animal. Now, let's assume that we just purchased a cow from a new breeder, okay? Now, instead of going straight to the animal editor view, which we could do, but we're going to use a little bit of a time saver here and use the buy animal action. So if you come up under the action spring control, which has the little gear icon, you can click on buy new animal. And your buy new animal um, view is displayed. So let's go ahead and enter the following. So for the display name, let's put in Fernie SL5. Okay, we're going to leave her as a cow. For breed, let's make her a Hereford. Okay, we have a little bit of uh, change here, right? Now, in the buyer field, put in our information there. In the seller, let's go ahead and put in Bob Breeder. All right. Now, we'll leave the sale date. We'll set as, let's go to August 14th of 2005. And sale notes, we'll put bought for breeding stock. And then we will hit OK. Now, again, this pops up. Hereford does not yet exist in the system. Do we want to add it? Yes. Boom. Beautiful. And it's in. Now, if you're following along, okay, I've gone through this tutorial a bunch of times before I finally got the video footage that I wanted. Um, but it also could also pop up a quick add for Bob Breeder. You can quick add owners and contacts in the system the same way you can with breeds, okay? And now this takes us directly back to the animal editor view. Now, you can continue to enter any additional information about the animal, such as any pedigree information, IDs, or other characteristic data. Now, you might be wondering what that action just bought you. So, let's go to the event history. Now, this tab will display the chronological history of events that have been attached to this animal. Now, all animals begin with a birth event, and you can see that listed here on the panel on the left. Now, when you click on it, the panel to the right will populate with the data 
for that event. Notice how the Bob, how, or how the, how the Bob, how the owner is set to Bob Breeder. This is because, as far as we know, Bob was the owner of the animal at birth. Now, if we click on the purchased event, there you go. Now, in this view, you see that the buyer is you. And this effectively represents a changing of ownership for the animal. Now, if you have inspection certificates, you can put those numbers in the sale notes or however you want to keep your information. Now, this change of ownership is significant because it tells ranch manager when the animal entered your herd. So if you were to go and view the cattle herd, herd dam's view for the year of 2005, you would see that Fernie SL5 is listed with the little purchased icon listed in the notes column of the view. Okay, so let's go and take a look at that. So we're going to go to select view. We're going to go down to the herd dams view. And right here in 2021, obviously, you see that Fernie is there. So let's go to 2006. Okay. Now let's go ahead and read, take this to 2005. Now, if you go back to 2005, notice only Fernie's there, Betsy's gone. Now, wow, where did Betsy go? Well, since she wasn't born, she's not in, not in, not displayed. Okay. Now, also notice that the purchased symbol in the notes column beside Fernie, which is over here on the right. Okay. Now, if we click on the green, the green right arrow, under working year. Okay. Well, let's do the left one. Let's go back to 2004, and there's nothing there. Now, why is this? Well, it's because we had not purchased Fernie yet. We didn't buy her until 2005. So she's obviously not going to show up in our herd in 2004. Okay. Now, you can, there is, if you still want to look in this year and you want to see those other animals, you can come down to select view and to unmanaged animals. And they will show. So, you can take a view of your animals from almost anywhere. So, the unmanaged animals view, this one, will allow you to edit animals even after they have left your herd. So, if you sell an animal and you need to add some information that you may have left out, you know, a year down the road, you can go into unmanaged animals, access that animal's record, and add that information. Okay? So let's go ahead and go back to the herd dams view. And let's come up a couple of years. Actually, let's just go ahead and come up to present. Okay. So now let's go ahead and select Fernie from the herd dams view. Okay? So... Now, the third way to enter an animal <laughs> is via breeding. But we cannot have a calf without a breeding. So, let's breed Fernie, okay? So, we'll select on Fernie here. We'll go up to Actions and AI Breed Animal. And this brings up the Breed Animal dialog. So, in here for the breeding date, Let's go ahead and put in 10 of August, and let's put last year, okay? The sire, we'll go ahead and put in Texas T, which we can type in or select from the little Rolodex drop down here. And then click OK. Now, if you flip the working year back one year, you'll see this little test tube icon next to Fernie's name in the notes column. That symbolizes that she was bred or AI'd in this year. It's simple. So we'll go ahead and go back to the current year. Now, if we click on the due dates tab at the bottom of the display. Now, this will show you 
the expected date, your breed date and your expected due date for Fernie. So let's go ahead and have that calf. So we'll go ahead and click on Fernie. We'll go up to actions and we'll go up to calf animal. Then we'll go ahead and set our date. So let's do, let's do the 13th of May of this year. And we'll click OK. Now notice this brings us right back to the edit animal view. So we can enter the information for the calf. Now notice on the right, the sire and the dam fields have both already been populated along with the breed. Now, for this reason, okay, now remember, Fernie was not a purebred Angus like Texas T. So you might want to go ahead and adjust that, okay, to calculate for a cross. All right. Now, so in order to complete the record, we do need to provide a display name. So let's go ahead and enter Freckles TN. We will change the gender to bull. Okay. And remember, Sire and Dam are already populated. Now, if you didn't want to go ahead and add something like this, you could come to here and select half blood, three quarter blood, seven eighths, full, mixed, or purebred, or unknown if you're unsure. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and save the animal. The breed Angus Herford does not yet exist. Yes, add it. And Freckles is saved. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at Fernie's record. Okay. Now, there's a quick way to navigate directly to her record from this view. Okay, now to navigate to Fernie, all you do is you come up here to your dam field and you click on the label that says dam. And that takes you straight to Fernie's record. Okay, so if you look at the bottom left corner, you'll see a little symbol here that looks like a stork. That means that she has or calved <laughs> this year. <laughs> Cattle don't farrow. Um, but that shows that she calved in this year. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and go to the event history tab. And you see the progression of events. Unknown date for birth. August 14th, 2005, we purchased her. August 10th, 2020, we bred her. And May 13th, 2021, she farrowed. Or calf man i gotta quit doing that i even do it with our cows <laughs> okay now sometimes twins can happen so to do that you go back to the herd dams view you click on fernie you come up and you can calve animal again okay so let's go ahead and put 13th May 2021. And this one, let's go ahead and call this one Missy NT. Now, we're going to add the breed the same. We're going to do the same thing to the breed with Angus Herford Cross. And we're going to go ahead and change this down to mixed. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and save the animal. Now, if you go back to Fernie's record, which you can click on the damn link. And if you click on gestation history and the action tabs, well, now you see this. Each year that Fernie calves and is associated with a specific breeding event, the actual days between conception and delivery can be calculated. Now, open records may exist in this view if the animal was bred but has not calved yet, okay, or if the birth event was not recorded. Now, just like that, we are through with how to enter animals into Ranch Manager. So, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and go over viewing and how to edit animals. Okay, we want to be able to customize views, look at specific information that we want in an order that we want. Well, Ranch Manager will let you do that. So, 
again, here we are. So if you guys want to see the, how to customize your views and edit your animals, we will catch you guys in the next video. And guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification icon so when we do post the next video, you will be warned, uh, notified about it and you can come check it out. Also, guys, remember, you can get Ranch Manager at ranchmanageropen.com. And anyway, guys, we will see you in the next one. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.